Okay, I've got a patient this week with a chronic labral tear and I thought I'd share with you the exercise that I'm giving him and they are basically my top six to start with when you've got a chronic labral tear. So not acute, but chronic labral tear. You've had the labral tear for a long period of time. You're dealing with a bit of pain and instability. For this guy, he's hypermobile, so that's a double whammy. He's hypermobile and he's got a posterior labral tear. Now these can be anterior labral tears. Sometimes if they've got a dislocation, sometimes they can be posterior. Here's the posterior one. It goes from about sort of four o'clock to nine o'clock. So it means around the back here like this. Makes them unstable. Gives them that feeling of weakness, instability, unsure of it. A little bit of pain, but because it's chronic, he's had it for a long period of time. He's built up some muscle around the shoulder, just not enough. And I'm gonna go through the things that I'm gonna give him and if you've got the same sort of thing, hopefully they're gonna help you. Now, we've gotta go through quite a few things. There's six of them, you need a few things like Pilates ball was good, TheraBand through tubing is good, power band, and maybe a little light dumbbells. So I'll go through each one of those and why you need them. First up is your scapular press using this. Now we're doing a scapular press for a label tear because we want to try and improve the force closure around a joint. You remember, if you've got like a posterior labral tear, any sort of labral tear, you're losing your force closure. So this is the ball and this is the socket. You've got to remember like the shoulder joint is like a golf ball sitting on a golf tee. So that's the golf tee, that's the golf ball. So the ball can move quite a bit around that to make up more of the socket. Imagine like there's a squid ring, like a calamari ring around that golf tee that helps suck onto that, okay? It keeps it, makes it more of a socket, but makes it a sort of rubbery socket. That's your form, your form closure, right? That's got a deficit. It's got a tear in it, so there's gonna be some more movement of that ball, because it's not as snug. Therefore, what we try to do is create more rotator cuff on top of that ball to hold it tighter, okay? So the reason why we do this is work here, which is a scapular press in this position, is we're trying to create more function of that rotator cuff to stabilize the joint. Remember, the, the primary job of a rotator cuff is not to do this stuff, it's to do stabilization of the ball. All the four work together to suck onto the ball of the humerus and keep it in the socket. So if I've got my hand down here, instead of doing a scapular press like this, which does a little bit of rotator cuff, I'm gonna make that surface super wobbly. So putting a ball under that in this position here, when I have to commit and load bear over there, this unstable surface here, you can see I'm wobbling a little bit, makes me work really hard and teaches me to stabilize. And think of the muscle, the rotator cuff, locking on and grabbing onto that ball to increase the stability and make up for the deficit of the label tear. All right, so once I've got that position, and for my guy, he found that quite hard. Even just to, just just committing to weight bearing was quite difficult. Put it on his right shoulder and he's totally fine. Left one is like, whoa, this is wobbly. So he had to learn this movement here, just isometric loading first. Then he has to try and go through a dynamic movement of the scapula, meaning retraction, your body goes towards the ground, and then scapular press, which is protraction, there without leaning onto my knee. So I've got to commit over the ball. Look at that, retraction, protraction, okay? The wobbliness, the stimulation through there is gonna make me work hard on that. It's gonna to learn to try and stabilize that ball, hold on to it, okay? Which increases my stability, reduces the effect, the fact I've got a labral tear. Because this guy is not going for surgery because he's got no pain, he just feels unstable. It's not popping out of the joint, he just feels unstable a bit of a week. So we're gonna work on exercises to see, can we get the body compensating enough around that joint to make him feel good? So he doesn't have to go and see the surgeon for this one. So that's a really good exercise. Now to follow on to that, what I want you to try and do is a little bit more open chain work. So that's your closed chain one, stimulates that quite well. Open chain one, we use our shoulders in life and open chain quite a bit. So you need a band like this and put it around something behind you. Now, if I'm doing my right shoulder, okay, it's gonna be like that. What I wanna aim for is you push that straight into there. Now, at this stage, what I'm gonna be doing is no shoulder joint work. Again, once I've got it there, all my rotator cuff is switching on to hold my ball stable. I don't wanna do a press, 
What I want to do is again, a scapular press, which is that movement, retraction, protraction. Now, because it's out here, it's a little bit wobbly. Okay, it's a little, I have to control that movement. So my brain is saying, well, I'm saying don't move my hand up and down or right back and forth. So as I go back, I'm trying to control the fact that it wants to do this. All right? And as I push forward, I'm trying to control it as well. So what I want to think about is how smooth can I make that movement under load. So I'm putting my shoulder under a bit of strain, a bit of load, but I'm not moving the shoulder joint. So the load that's going through the shoulder is getting similar. That cuff has to hold on, ready for some movement. And also, because I've got a long lever there, I'm trying to minimize how much movement I have here by holding in here, all right? Because I'm not sort of putting my hand, my hands free, okay? So when it's out like that, I really want to make sure that I'm going all the way back and all the way forward and really pushing that forward so it's vulnerable and testing my shoulder to improve the stability of that glenohumeral joint, okay? The way I do that is, I can feel that already in my cuff, is getting that, that rotator cuff locking on, hold on to that ball, putting under a little bit of load, right? So those are your first two I'd work on. Then, you want to sort of beef up a few areas around the joint, especially that rear delt and a bit of that rotator cuff at the back. I like to do extension. Now, with extension, what I suggest you do is go a little bit higher. Normally, we go for just general extension, you're going this way on a level sort of surface. I would perhaps take that higher and then kneel down. So it's more like going into a lap pull down. So I'd go maybe up here, put a fair tubing or fair band on, okay? And then you go backwards into, let me just fix my little microphone here, is backwards into what, like, think of like backwards enough that when you're when that is straight, your arm is hanging on the angle. So you think of like, if you look at that from my shoulder joint to my hand to the anchor point, I still want to be on a straight line. So that's how sort of tight it needs to be. And then what I'm going to do is not do a row. What I want to do is a straight arm pull down, but I've got to have my shoulder blade back first. So I pin my shoulder blade back here, all right? Then I pull down and through and back to here, all right? And that's going to get me work on my tricep for sure but it's gonna really work on that rear delt, okay? And with people with especially posterior labral tears, they'll feel quite weak back there because that's where sometimes the pain has been, right? And where the injury is, they're usually weak. And they lose a bit of the muscle tone there. So you wanna try and beef that up, it'll feel heaps more stable. So pull that shoulder blade back, pull it down past your hip in a swipe. Just make sure when you return that hand, the shoulder stays back all the way till you're straight, then you can release it. Okay, it's a very mechanical sort of two prong movement there. What I just don't want you doing is trying to pull down like that. Okay, it's not going to be very kind on the shoulder. And you, when you pull back, you just also don't want to let, let it pop forward there either. So make sure that you're always setting it, pulling through past your hip, returning it, and releasing it. And you just got to think about this. Like a lap pull down, or just not using my bicep, using my elbow. All right, that's a really nice one to do. Then you start focusing on internal and external rotation. I'm going to give you two external rotations to one internal. So the first external I like people doing is an isometric one. Now this one is way harder than it looks, and you don't need any load. But what I want you to do, so I'm going to use my left one. I want you to be on your front, okay, and. Once you've got the hang of it, then you can put your head down. But you might want to just look at your hand first to see where it is. The elbow needs to stick straight out from the shoulder. Okay, so right out there. So don't have it too high or too low. Like just straight from the shoulder. Try and have your elbow joint at 90 degrees. So basically, my forearm is parallel with the body. I want you to lift your elbow and your hand off the ground. But you're going to lift your thumb and hand first to get as much external rotation as you possibly can. All right? Then what you've got to try and do is lift your elbow and your hand, but keep your hand above your elbow as far as you can go, all right? And hold it there for a count of 10 seconds at maximum. All right, and once you've got it there, down and release. Now, hypermobile people will find they go a lot higher. They've just got more range in the joint. But what you'll find, if you're a hypermobile person with a label tear, your good shoulder is probably gonna go way higher on one side and your bad one is going to go not as high. You just don't have as much strength. You've probably got the same movement quality in the joint. You don't have as much strength in the joint. And this is where this training is going to get you better and better and better. Learning The brain learning to try and really load up those muscles at the back. So we're talking here. All right, you're going to feel that right through the back of the joint. 
and then lifting up, external rotating as far as you can possibly go into there, holding for a good 10 seconds, maximal lift without cramping, and down and relax. And it's like, you'd be quite surprised how hard that stuff is. A really nice sort of precursor into doing banded external rotation, which we'll come to in a minute. So that's your, what we call like a 90-90 external rotation, isometric. Then probably flip it, because you're gonna do another isometric, uh, you're gonna do another external rotation one. So go into an internal rotation one to give you a rest period. That I would do with a dumbbell. Now, this is also really good for those people who've had a, say, a dislocation as well. So maybe you've got a labor tear because you've had a dislocation. You've probably seen on a previous dislocation video, I've done this before. This one I'll do out at 90 degrees. So you go into this position, I'll just swap to my right shoulder for you, is you go again, straight out from the shoulder, all right, so you think 90 degrees straight from the shoulder. This needs to be 90 degrees, all right? So when you roll backwards though, you're gonna have to have your elbow in the air. So I don't want you resting here and cheating. So elbow up in the air, and you've got to think, I want to keep that in one position. So when you look at your elbow and you roll backwards, it's got to stay in one position. You go right back into full external rotation as much as you can tolerate through here, all right? And then pull forward. There's your internal rotation. Now, I, some people go a little bit further. You probably don't need to. You probably need to go to about there to 90 degree, well, zero degrees if you like, back to your 90 degree position, and then return again. Just make sure when you go backwards, if you watch my elbow, when you go, it's don't drop that way. So don't sort of slink and like that, and then roll it. You're not, if you do this sort of stuff, you're not learning any stability really here. Okay, you're just learning how to use muscles into rotation. I want you doing both. We're learning internal rotation strength because of the load, all right, and it's out of range. And we're also learning control. And like I said at the start, the prime function of that rotator cuff is to control the ball in the socket. All right? So you're doing two things at once, which is how you need to do it. And therefore, this weight needs to be light. You can't have this too heavy. If it's too heavy, you're going to start losing form. Okay, so just don't make a mistake with making this too heavy. That's two kilos. Some of you will probably find that's hard enough. Right? You can always increase it, but just watch how much you increase it. Right? So internal rotation one is really, really good for you. Right? Then, the last one is the external. Now, because this is a chronic labral tear, usually these people, like my patient, is out of pain. They're just unstable and not strong enough. So they need some strengthening work, but they need clever stuff. So you could probably afford to go straight to a 90 degree external rotation with this one. Again, what would you do? I'll probably put the band down low now. All right, so you go down onto the bottom part here. So when your elbow, well, when you're in a rest period of the exercise, it's still got some tension there, okay? Where if it's up high, you're not gonna get any tension when you're down low. So put your elbow out to, straight out there again, all right? You're gonna go from here, which is a little bit dropped, a little bit lower than that sort of level point of your shoulder, a little bit lower, and then externally rotate to full 90 degrees. Sometimes it's handy to have a look in the mirror to make sure you're not out here. A lot of people tend to sort of lift outwards, and when they compensate, they sort of start extending the arm. So keep your elbow at 90 degrees, keep your elbow straight out from the shoulder, if you like, at 90 degrees, and just rotate that down there's your sort of rest period, there's still some tension there, and then haul it back without compensating through the shoulder. Okay, so make sure you don't move the shoulder blade when you do external. Don't try and do this sort of thing and try and cheat by doing that. This has got to stay stable, and when you look in the mirror, it goes directly backwards, right back as far as you can go, so you can really feel it through the back there, just like you did on the ground when you're doing that lift, all right? And if you get to the point where you go, I can't go any further, the band's probably too hard. So this is a green, this is a heavy. You might need to go to a yellow. It depends on how strong you are and how much deficit you've had. But this movement here is going to be really, really effective at you getting strength at 90 degrees up in that vulnerable position where you're way up here, where you are going to be vulnerable when you're doing racket sports, that sort of stuff, to keep that strength going. So that's a lot to take in, I know. But for chronic label tears, you need to do a lot of different stuff to get an overall stability increase in the shoulder joint and the scapula, all right? So those things are quite important. And that's just a taster, like there's six things. They can advance, there's other things you can do, but some people, people are a bit time poor. Try the six, start with that. See you next time.